well, why is triangle pose completely different from revolved triangle pose? In this video, we are going to look at some of the very common confusions that can happen in understanding the names of asana and what we're doing. We'll look at the difference between triangle and revolved triangle, two poses that sound almost exactly the same, Parjvakanasana and Parjvotanasana. And finally, we'll look at all three of the warriors and break down how they're different. So by the end of this video, you will have a little bit more leg up on the terms that we use in yoga class and what exactly we're doing. Okay, so let's start with the most common confusions, which is the difference between, say, triangle pose and revolved triangle pose. See, we have this whole category of poses that are called revolved that actually are very different from the pose that has the original name. So triangle pose, trikonasana, is very different from revolved triangle pose or parvritta trikonasana. So let me just talk about these revolved poses for a moment. Now, you know a pose is revolved if they call it twisted or revolved, obviously. In Sanskrit, that is parvritta. So that's that kind of revolving action that you're hearing. Parvritta trikonasana, parvritta parjvakanasana, parvritta ardhachandrasana. So that's revolved triangle, revolved side angle, and revolved half moon. But here's the thing, everybody, and this is why it gets so confusing. Triangle pose is very different than revolved triangle pose, even though they share the same name. So let me break this down for you. And the most important place that it happens is the hips. So when I'm looking at a pose like Parjva Kanasana, side angle pose, triangle pose, Trikonasana, or half moon pose, that's the balancing pose, Ardha Chandrasana, these are all what we would call externally rotated or open. So when I line up my foundation for these poses, I'm turning one of my thighs out, right? This is where we hear uh, the cue, line your front heel up with the middle of your back arch, turn your back heel back slightly, right? So I'm externally rotating my front thigh and opening my pelvis towards the side of the mat. This is what we might call external rotation, opening the pose, you know. So this is all based on the foundation of warrior two. So I'm not really changing much in my hips when I come into side angle pose or Tarikanasana, or if I wanna make it balancing, half moon pose. In all of those poses, I'm still working this same anatomical action, external rotation of one of my thighs, opening of the pelvis, right? So it's this kind of opening pose. So that's warrior two, Parjvakanasana, Trikonasana, and half moon pose, Ardha Chandrasana. Now, as soon as I add the word revolved or Parvrita to the pose, it changes entirely. In fact, so much so that you might as well forget the other name. Forget it's called Trikonasana, right? So all of the revolved poses are instead based upon a foundation, which is what we might call neutral in the pelvis. That is, rather than opening my thigh, I'm actually working the hips to be square, neutral, no rotation, right? So this is what we might call even closed. So when I'm revolving the pose, the hips are going to be what we can think of as square, even though they're usually not quite square, but that's kind of working towards this idea. So let's take a look first at revolved triangle pose. So in revolved triangle pose, the foundation is quite different. Now, my foot, my front foot and my back foot are usually about hip distance apart. If I got my balance, they might be heel to heel, but my back foot is turned in a lot. In fact, this is more like, you know, a, a short high lunge position, right? Where I'm really working everything to be square. But in this pose, I turn my heel down just a little bit, kind of like warrior one, where my back heel is turned down so that I have some additional balance. I get a nice calf stretch, but I'm still working this closing action of the hips, okay? So this pose, if I hinge forward from here, right? Some of you may recognize this as pyramid pose, right? Or pars votanasana in Sanskrit. If I add a twist to this pose, whoa, 
that's revolved a triangle. So it would be more accurate to call this pose revolved pyramid pose, but instead we call it revolved triangle pose. Cause I guess, cause the shape of it still looks kind of like a triangle, right? But my hips are doing something entirely different. And of course I'm rotating through the spine. So just to make the differences clear, triangle pose, externally rotated open hip, heel to arch alignment, right? Revolved triangle pose, different. Heel to heel or hip distance apart, back thigh turning way in, hips hugging in or working towards square, adding a twist. So pyramid pose plus a twist equals revolved triangle pose, right? A little confusing unless we break it down and don't get confused by the name. So same thing with what we have, side angle pose and revolved side angle pose. So here's side angle pose again, external rotation, opening the pelvis, da, 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 da. When I make it revolved side angle pose, again, we're coming back to our hip square action. So the foundation for this is actually warrior one, which is a square neutral pose. Again, hip distance apart, maybe heel to heel if I have my balance. And though my back heel is turned out a little bit, that's only for balance, right? So my back thigh is turned out slightly so that my knee is protected, it's all in one line, but I'm really working my hips forward. So that's a far cry from the big opening of something like Parjva Konasana. So here, hips square, knee bent, like warrior one, but then I add a twist. That's Parvita Parjva Konasana. Now, most of the time, having this back heel down, sometimes that's a little troublesome for the knee. So most of the time, you'll see this pose actually from high lunge, which is very similar to warrior one. The difference is the back heel is down in warrior one, right? But I'm still working all the other actions. So often we'll see Parvita Parjva Konasana, revolved side angle pose, is actually high lunge with a twist. Now let's look at our final revolved pose here, revolved half moon pose, Parvita Ardha Chandrasana. So half moon pose, just like our warrior twos, Parjva Konasana, Trikonasana, is externally rotating in the front thigh, opening the hip up, except for this time I'm balancing right on that leg. Revolved half moon is built on the foundation of warrior three. What? Yeah, we should call it revolved warrior three, right, instead. So my hips are square. So again, remember like, just like the high lunge and everything else, I'm keeping everything neutral and square. Here's my warrior three, I bring my hand down, I add a twist, and that is what we call revolved half moon. Now you're going like, why did they confuse the names? Why? Well, from a distance, the shape of those poses look similar, but anatomically, what's going on in the body and the actions that you need are very, very different. So just to summarize, <laughs> side angle pose, triangle pose, half moon pose, all are external or open hipped poses, whereas revolved triangle, revolved side angle, and revolved half moon are all squaring through the hips or closing through the hips and adding a rotation. So very different. Next, let's look at two commonly confused poses because the names are so similar. Parjva Konasana and Parsvottanasana. So let's talk a little bit about the name. Parjva Konasana, Parsvottanasana. They sound really similar. Well, that makes sense. Parjva means side and asana means pose. So both of these asana have side and pose in their name, but the middle part is a little different. So in Parjva Kanasana, I'm talking about side angle pose. Parjva meaning side, Kona meaning angle, and asana meaning pose. In Parsvottanasana, 
I'm talking about side, parsva, but then there's this uttanasana, you know, like a forward fold. So it's like an intense stretch pose. Parsvottanasana. Classically, my hands behind my back here. So the first pose, Parjvakanasana, side angle pose, right? Is externally rotating, open hip, and it's a huge like, right? It's like an angle here in my legs and my side is really stretching. Parsvottanasana, otherwise called pyramid pose, is a squared hip pose. So my feet are hip distance apart, right? Maybe heel to heel if I've got my balance. My back toe is turned way forward to the front corner of my mat. So I'm essentially trying to keep my thighs neutral, but I do let my back uh, heel come down for balance. And then the big stretch of this, right, is the hamstring stretch. And traditionally the arms are behind in reverse namaste, right? And if you had the flexibility, or maybe if I were a little more warmed up on a really good day, you could bring your head down towards your shin. So that's the difference between Parjva Kanasana and Parsvottanasana. Sound really similar, but do very different things. Finally, let's take a look at the three different warrior poses. Virabhadrasana 1, Virabhadrasana 2, and Virabhadrasana 3. First, let's take a look at Virabhadrasana 2. So in Virabhadrasana 2, I have a nice big stance. I'm externally rotating my front thigh, heel line to arch, back toes turned in just slightly, and sitting down into the legs. Deep, you guys. This is not a pose to hang out here. You are down in the legs. And this is uh, kind of working this front thigh in external rotation, turning the pelvis open, right? And settling down deep into the legs. Big leg strengthener. Warrior one is different. So warrior one is more like a high lunge, right? So let's just look at high lunge first. In high lunge, my feet are hip distance apart. I'm working my hips to square, right? Stretching through the back leg. So I'm getting a big hip flexor stretch through this back leg, lifting the arms up. And there's a little bit of spinal extension, a little tiny bit of a back bend perhaps in the upper back. Now, as opposed to high lunge, in warrior one, I let the back heel turn down slightly. What this does is gives me a little bit more balance here, right? And a little bit of a calf stretch. Also adds a slight element of a twist and rotation through your body. So when I'm doing warrior one, one thing I want you guys to notice is that because my back toes are turned down, that means my back shin is turning out slightly. I'm going to let, let me just show you from this direction. Right? As opposed to high lunge, where everything is just straight ahead, right? Because nothing's turning. As soon as I bring my heel down, I let my thigh turn out just slightly because I don't want to create a twist through my knee. So if my foot is stuck at the floor at an angle, if I turn my thigh in, it's going to create a little torquing action. Now the leg is straight, so maybe not a big deal, but I'm a cautious yoga teacher, so I let the back thigh stay a little turned out but I am still turning my pelvis forward. And this is a deep pose, right? And then there's a lot of lifting through the sides of the waist. Eventually the hands can touch and you can look up. So that's warrior one. Big stretch for the front line of the body. Warrior three is a balancing pose. And it's also a heck of a hamstring opener. So in warrior three, like warrior one, I'm neutral. That is, I'm not opening my hips up. I'm keeping my thighs even and in a straight line and what we might call square. But in warrior three, right, I'm lifting my back leg up. So there's a big stretch for my hamstring here, right? And there's lots of different hand versions. You bring your hands to your heart, hips, out to the side or even forward. Whoa. So that's a big hamstring stretch. It's a balancing pose. Also engages and fires up your glutes. So just to summarize between the three warriors, warrior two, externally rotating pose, big leg strengthener, bit of a hip opener, warrior one, hips more square, hip flexor opener, opening the front body, right? Whoa, lifting up through the spine. Warrior three, still square, but balancing. Whoa, hamstring opener, bit of a glute engager. But what they all have in common is they're all 
super strong. Virabhadra was a great warrior. And all three of these poses call upon us to be really strong and integrated in our body. So there you have it, everybody. In this video, we broke down some of those things that are so often confusing in the names of yoga poses. So we looked at the difference between triangle, trikonasana, and parvritta trikonasana, parjva konasana, side angle pose, and pavritta parjva konasana, half moon pose, ardha chandrasana, and pavritta ardha chandrasana. We also looked at the difference between parjva konasana and parsvo tanasana. And finally, we wrapped up by just taking a quick look at the three different warriors, Virabhadrasana 1, 2, and 3, so that we could really understand how they're different. So I hope that that gives you uh, a deeper understanding of these different poses. Teachers, I hope that gives you a, a foundation for how they're different and why we might use them at different times. Um, if you enjoyed this, please subscribe for more tips, and I will see you on the mat.